Now this is the Asus Xonar U7 external USB sound card. It was released back in 2013 and it had some, well, it nice tricks up its sleeve. Something that a lot of people wanted, so this sound card was in a lot of demand. And now, eight years later, how good is it? And is this, well, hidden feature or secret capability still as cool as it was eight years ago? Let's find out in this video. Now the Asus Xonar U7 is an external USB powered sound card. It has 24 bits and 192 kilohertz and it can drive 7.1 surround speakers. Keep in mind that you need to amplify those external speakers because well the sound card itself absolutely does no amplifying itself because well USB powered just doesn't deliver that much power. Now, the card itself also has something that's called the ASUS Hyper Grounding. And let me see what it actually means. I have it here. Uh, exclusive ASUS Hyper Grounding PCB fabrication ensures strong signal insulation to reduce distortion and interference, also known as component crosstalk. Now, I'm not really sure if it will help, but if it does, we will see those numbers, well, getting a lot better in the uh, stereo crosstalk with Rightmark Audio Analyzer. So Anton, what is this hidden feature or this cool thing that you were talking about? Well, it's Dolby HT V4 and the HT is, is for home theater. And this is a way, and ooh, it almost fell to the ground, uh, something that Dolby created to, so you can create or convert uh, stereo signals into 5.1 or 5.1 into 7.1. So it's a really neat and cool feature. But there's a small catch here. In my humble opinion, you just cannot upgrade sound from stereo into a multi-speaker setup, as you will just miss the information for multi-speakers. It's like upgrading an old 80s TV signal into 4K. The information just isn't there to create those hyper-sharp images. But Dolby HD is a bit more advanced. By doing some clever logarithmic calculations, there's a lot more information extracted and converted into a, a sort of surroundish uh, sound. So that's a really cool feature, but well, how does it sound in reality? Well, I'll get back to that a bit later on in the listening session. So if you're wondering about what does that sound like, I will let you know there. Now, something else that is very interesting on this sound card is that the fact that it's a class two USB audio device. Well, you can say, well, what does that mean? Well, I figured it out for you because I didn't know myself, but what that means is that nearly all USB external sound cards are class one. And what that means is if you plug it into your computer, Windows 10 will automatically detect it and install any drivers that are needed. Well, they won't or it won't even install any drives because it's just a standard way of uh, transporting the audio. Class 2 is something completely different. Uh, when you plug it in, you will not be able to use the sound card uh, immediately. You have to install drivers. Now, this is a bit cumbersome and a bit annoying at sometimes, but there's a good reason behind that. Class 1 devices are plug and play, so you can immediately hear every sound. But there is a downside to that, because it will only be or it will be restricted to 24 bits or 96 kilohertz. Also, any well digital signal processing cannot be done, or well, very limited. Class 2, because it has its own drivers, will have the ability to well unleash the power or of its digital signal processor, like converting Dolby HD. And that's something that a class two or this device does. So you have to install the drivers uh, because otherwise it will just not function. Speaking of USB, because this card is USB powered, well, there is a bit of a snag. Uh, on the bottom uh, here, there's a small selector for USB 1.0 or 2.0. Now, well, I do not have any machines left that use USB 1.0. 
And as a matter of fact, I don't think that it will be that good to use anyway, because the data transfer rate is so low that I think you would not even be able to use 7.1 signals. But still, I selected 2.0 and, well, I plugged it into some dev device, some computers, but nearly all devices or computers just, it, it wouldn't install, it just had some strange clicking. Only that computer, which is a true USB 2.0, uh, controller that functions if you have a 3.0 3.1 3.2 uh, usb controller it just will not function and it will give errors now this is a bit of a downside so what about those specifications what components are used well this sound card uses the c media cm66 32A digital signal processor, a processor that was also used in the Asus Xonar AE, a sound card with excellent quality for a low price, and the Asus Strix Rate Pro, a great sound card, also with good components and an external volume knob. So what else is in this little plastic case? The digital to analog converter for the headphone output is the CS4398, and for all the other outputs is the CS4362. Both are very standard digital to analog converters and they are used in so many other products. The analog to digital converter is the CS5361, with hypergrounding being promoted to eliminate electromagnetic interference, it is interesting to see that the headphone deck is in the bottom right and the signal has to be transported via a little unshielded flat cable to the bottom left of the case where the headphone out and the mic inject plugs are, a potential EMI source. What I mean. So let's take a look at the driver interface. Now, if you go over to the Xoner U7 audio center, you first get a welcoming message. And here you can set several things. Now, for those of you who have already seen a Xeer driver interface in the past, like with the Teufel headset or other Xoner products, this will not be very new and it looked very similar in all those other products. For the headphone, you can set like the headphone settings to change the impedance for your headset itself from low gain to high gain but also you can set several other things like the environmental effects now for those of you who are regular viewers of my channel you will already know that i truly hate this and i do not see why you would even use it because there's absolutely no point there is one setting that is rather interesting and that's this the dolls are htv4 so what does that interface look like well you go down here and it's rather simple you just have an on and off button you can also customize your settings like so so what is the difference well let's take a quick listening session in this video with the silky smooth song Now the only thing that maybe people were interested in is the Dolby HTV4 setting. And that's something that I can understand. But uh, what does it do in reality? Well, I did run some Rightmark Audio Analyzer results, which I will show you a bit later on. And I also, well, did some listening sessions with it with just a headset and with a 5.1 setup. But 
it's as I said before, you just cannot create surround sound from a stereo signal because the information just isn't there. Now I must say that in most systems that claim to create surround sound, they will just add a lot of reverb and say, well, this is surround. Well, it's just adding a lot. It's, it's like standing in a bathroom and you hear a sound, but you cannot hear from where it's coming from. It will just be from everywhere. And now that's the same thing that happens in most systems, which claims to add a lot of surround. Here it's a bit more subtle. It's a more like standing in your living room and hearing a sound. It's it may be coming from the right side, something there is or something from the left, but never from the front or never from the back. It's it's sort of strange, but it's somewhere between real surround sound and simulated a lot of lots of reverb. So Dolby, well, it sort of does the trick, but it wasn't as good as people were saying eight years ago. Maybe the standards have gone a bit up, but I wasn't amazed. It was pleasantly surprised. I think that's the right word for it. Now, these are the results for Rightmark Audio Analyzer. And as you can see, it gets a lot of excellence. Just one good with the total, total harmonic distortion plus noise. But otherwise, it's a lot of excellence and a general performance of very good. I mean, the frequency response is, the graph is, well, almost ideal. The only major downside that I could find is that the drop off is just after 20 kilohertz. I'd like to see that it was a bit more further at all the way to maybe 30 or higher, but that's something nerdy nitty gritty, gritty for me. If we check out the numbers with the Dolby Home Theater settings enabled, this time with the gaming settings, you will see that the bass will get uh, pumped up and the middles and the low will be will be dampened so you may wonder if it's such a good idea to use Dolby Home Theater. Now the Asus Xoner U7 is a, isn't a bad sound card. I mean the audio quality was adequate, um, it was better than a lot of onboard solutions but it just couldn't convince me. It wasn't as good as I expected it to be. Uh, uh, the driver interface, it, it is, well, it kind of looks old, but it gets the job done and you have all the settings that you would want from a system. So that's also, well, a bit of a plus. Also, the Rightmark Audio Analyzer results with, uh, with all the excellence that I just showed you, makes it that it is, well, a really good sound card, but I just do not trust those results. There is something suspicious going on and I'm not really sure what happens or maybe I'm just too suspicious of such good numbers. There's also a lot of downsides to this sound card. First of all, it's a USB 2.0 sound card. You have to install drives before you can use it. Now, I do not want to fiddle around with external sound cards where you have to install drivers first off. Uh, okay, you can use 192 kilohertz. Okay, you can use 24 bits and the raw power of the DSP is unleashed and you can use the Dolby HT V4. But besides that, I'm not planning on using the Dolby function anyway. So I want to use the device immediately. Also the fact that it's uh, only compatible with a USB 2.0 uh, controller on your motherboard and no USB 3.0. Uh, connectors makes it that is just well it's it's getting too old you will not be able to use it once you upgrade it to your next system because all newer motherboards will use USB 3.0 and that's why USB 2.0 is well there's absolutely no point and last but not least the other well downside of this sound card is the Dolby HD V4 although it is a lot better than most sound cards where they just add a lot of reverb or echo to a uh, signal. It's just, well, it just didn't convince me. It was nice and it was cool, but it was just more of a gimmick and more of an advanced gimmick. And well, with all that, I just cannot recommend this sound card. It's just plainly no. It is a nice feature. It has certainly some cool things, but it's just getting too old. So with that conclusion, Thank you for making it all the way to the end and I hope to see you in the next one. See you then, bye bye.